Ever drive by a place like this old cotton gin and wonder, what's up with that? Well, the fact is, some buildings simply outlive their original use. But that doesn't mean that they've outlived their usefulness. Finding new lives for old buildings is called adaptive reuse. And with a little bit of imagination, people can find all sorts of things to do with these old buildings. Ted Flato is an architect who loves to pick the bones of forgotten buildings. Look at that truss. Look at, look at the lightness of this little center cord. You can't go and buy these things. I mean, I just, that's magical. What do you see in here? <laughs> I see potential. Trusses. I see steel trusses. I see incredible wood timbers. I'm inspired by them, too. With imagination, Ted finds all sorts of things to do with old buildings. And he gets a hold of these unloved places for short money. With the price of building materials going up and the inventory of abandoned buildings doing the same, adaptive reuse might just be the best bargain going. But is that beam right there better than a new beam that I give you? Oh, yeah. No longer that you can even get wood of this quality. Who knows what will happen to this old cotton gin? If it's lucky, something like this. So what do you mean by adaptive reuse? It's taking something, adapting it, reusing it for a different use. Ted's firm, Lake Flato Architects, does some pretty upscale stuff, but they also know how to find a good deal. Flato had seen this abandoned cement plant in his hometown of San Antonio. He found out it was going to be knocked down, its steel beams sent over the border to Mexico to be melted down. When you go down to the cement factory, what do you see? Gorgeous, beautiful, great bones for something. You don't see scrap, you see architecture. I see architecture and I see potential and I see value. Ted had a customer with a lot of land, big dreams, and a tiny budget. Your ideal client, right? Uh, well, it was scary at first. Before you can say, hold the blast furnace, Ted and his client went shopping for a factory. So how do you go about buying an old cement factory? I mean, have they got a for sale sign out there? Your future home is here? When we went that day to the plant, they were slicing it all up into little bitty pieces. So you guys saved the structure. So we did. These structures have a better life than just having them sliced and diced and sold for scrap. The tiniest building available was their tool shed which was 180 feet long, 40 feet wide, and 20 feet tall. But for you, it's a pretty good deal. You, you got a lot of frames here totally for short money. It was a great deal for both parties. The reclamation contractor agreed to take the tool shed down, move it to the country, and then put it back up. All for $20,000. This is a lot of house for $20,000. Well, the frame. Right. The frame. And so that was the deal. That's a lot of frame for $20,000. That's a lot of frame. But living in a cement plant, that's really a leap of faith. We didn't want to live in the cement plant. We wanted to live in this beautiful piece of property. His wife had never visited the cement plant. She did not go on the shopping trip. It required guts because he didn't know at the time how this was going to turn in to an interesting and beautiful house. I love this idea that the, guy, that the wife stays home, and this is a guy's shopping trip, to an old cement factory. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it showed up here in the countryside one fine morning. It's about a hundred-year-old steel frame. It's all girdered. It's built up with steel angles and mm. cross bracing. You know, now if you had a steel building, it would just be an I-beam here. But instead, it's this bolted, girdered thing. You could never get so, this. So affordable, so but also charming. affordable and also gorgeous. At 7,200 square feet, there was no way that the whole thing was going to be dwelling space. So they broke it into three pieces. One now shelters a pool. A narrow middle section holds the master bedroom and office. And last but not least, the screen porch. What we did was we made the main living area into a screen room, which is this room. And I'm looking at the biggest screen porch I've ever seen. The design has Texas weather and landscape in mind. The south and west walls are open to the breezes, and the north wall is solid brick. Because the room is not heated or air conditioned, the only additional cost was a lot of screen. You know, screen comes in rolls like this. So screen wants to, if you ask screen what it wanted to be, <laughs> it wants to be in a big, long, horizontal roll. As I look at this brick patio right here, it's the same yeah. plane as the ground. Yeah. And so my eye just continues right out. And yeah. so would I if the screen hadn't been there. Yeah. All this volume allows you to really be connected to the outdoors. If you've got walls this high, you're going to get rain coming in. And so what we did was we didn't pour a slab under all this. All this brick is sitting on sand. 
So when rain comes in, it then goes through the brick and, and moves on out. If the client actually had had more money, they probably wouldn't have done it quite like this. And so it shows you the value of just working within your means and doing smart things. You're going to get a lot of calls from clients with no money. I know. <laughs> I'm worried about that. <laughs> And now we're sort of up in these trusses that you love so much. And I assume the customer's happy? Very happy. What'd the wife say when it was all done? Well, uh, living in kitchen is in here. Behind some of the world's biggest doors. Look at the side of these things. They're gigantic. It's a giganto house. So now the house just comes down on you here, right? Yeah. Now we're just in that stone pod. It's literally the cave. I mean, you've got the great outdoors out there, and when it's threatening, you retreat and you warm. This brick is from the uh, old kiln that uh, they had at the cement plant, so that was another one of those sale items. In Ted's vision of adaptive reuse, energy reused is money saved. This was something that was done 100 years ago. It was done well. If you were to do that again, it would cost you an incredible amount of money just to make something as beautiful as that. So you're bringing the material, but you're bringing the man hours 100 years forward. The man hours is probably even more. Yeah. The energy of man hours is huge. So why aren't we doing this more frequently? I think it's probably just a lack of imagination sometimes. It's just imagining, well, wait a minute. The bones of that old cement plant actually have value. And if you rethink it, and you change it, you can make something beautiful out of it. When one drives by an old cement plant and it's being torn down, you ought to think, huh, that could be my house. <laughs> Maybe today's a shopping day. Maybe today's a shopping day. <laughs>